<laughs> what was that? Oh. <laughs> All right, come on in. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for coming. We're here today to talk about something that's very important to the uh, citizens of the state of Minnesota, and that is the presumed upcoming special session. My understanding is the governor will be talking about uh, the terms of, of any kind of a session with legislative leadership tomorrow. But I'd like to highlight something I think is extremely important. Um, I have had legislation drafted to repeal what has come to be known as the warehousing tax. And of course, that is a tax that applies to goods that are stored and, uh, and, and businesses will be hit hard by this, resulting in undoubtedly less business here in this state, unemployment and the like. And so um, my plan is uh, once we're able to uh, put in legislation for the special session to uh, put this bill in, hopefully author it and, and get it through. Uh, why this tax, you may ask? Well, as I've traveled around the state and talked to people, talked to constituents, as well as, as uh, folks that from all over Minnesota, the sense for me is that this particular tax is toxic, that it is having a ripple effect on lots of businesses, and more importantly, frankly, wh why do we want a good business climate? Because we want hardworking taxpayers and families to be employed and to have jobs. And I believe it's going to have a very negative impact upon that. Uh, now, people are saying, well, this this thing doesn't go into effect until April. Well, any of you uh, that have been involved in business at any level know that planning goes on well in advance for taxes. And so the sooner that we can get rid of this, the better. Now, interestingly enough, this governor has agreed that this tax needs to go. So he needs to exercise leadership and get it done in the special session. Now, why aren't we talking about other taxes? Well because I believe this is a bipartisan issue. And we need to take care of the disaster relief issue. We need to take care of Minnesotans that are, are struggling because of some of the things that have gone on that uh, often do here in Minnesota over the summer with weather. And so um, I only want to talk about those things that we agree upon. And the governor has said this warehousing tax needs to go. The only issue is timing. And the sooner we do it, the better it will be for Minnesota's economic health and the better it will be for families and people that need jobs. So I'm, I'm really hoping that the governor will agree that this is something that's important, it's something that needs to be done, and it's something that needs to be done during the special session. Um, I'm pleased to be joined by a number of my colleagues here. Obviously, uh, it's, it's, uh, we're, we're in the interim, a lot of people are working out of town, whatever, so it's great to get this many people up here to show support for doing this. I appreciate it. Um, I'd point out that uh, Representative uh, O'Neill is the uh, Small Business Caucus co-chair in the House, and so she has particular interest in this issue, and of course everybody up here has families, businesses in their district that are being impacted by this, and, uh, and we're very concerned about it. So with that, if anybody wants to add anything great, otherwise I'd be happy to take some questions. Senator, uh, how would you replace, it, it's, <coughs> that tax is forecast to uh, generate about 85 million dollars next year uh, how to replace that well uh First off, let's talk about things like uh, the fact that we have now subsidized politicians through restoring this uh, uh, credit that you can get for giving to political campaigns. Maybe the first thing we ought to take a look at is whacking ourselves. Uh, secondly, uh, the legislative auditor reported that we are very sloppy on, uh, on, on recovering our Medicaid funds, uh, you know, taking care of our Medicaid program. Uh, we are subsidizing River Center. We're doing all kinds of things that I think we could look at to, to make this work out. But a couple of points need to be made, Bill. One is that <laughs> the governor says we're going to repeal this next spring. We're still going to have the same issue. So if the governor is concerned about how do we make up for the alleged lost revenue, uh, that same problem is going to be uh, in existence when we come into session on February 25th. Uh, and then secondly, <laughs> This governor and this Democratic legislature increased spending by over $3.1 billion. $3.1 billion. I think they can find $85 million, but as I said here, there are just a couple examples. We'd be certainly happy to help them. But leadership would be saying, look, we've created a problem, as in the governor and the Democratic legislature. We need to fix the problem. And part of that is taking just a teeny bit of their excessive spending back. Senator, the uh, governor says that he will not call a special session for disaster relief if you insist on bringing this up, not you personally, but uh, the Republicans. Are you willing to risk giving aid to people who need it 
for this? No. Uh, first off, it's not in my control. Um, obviously, this will be a deal worked out between legislative leadership, which of course is the speaker, the majority leader, Tom Bach, and the minority leader, David Hann, in the Senate, and, and Kurt Dowd in the House, and the governor. So they'll be working this out. No, no reasonable person would say that we should uh, hold disaster relief hostage to other issues. It's the governor that said that, not Republicans. Um, and we certainly should not do that. Uh, but what, what I hope is, and, and the reason I'm here today, is to raise the level of interest in this issue so that hopefully this governor will think twice and say, you know what, I went out to FarmFest and I saw the problems going on with the tax on, on this that applies to farmers and farming and equipment and the like. And I said, wow, we, you know, we can't do this. Well, I'm hoping he comes to the same realization about the warehousing tax. And again, I'm not trying to get into issues that we disagree on that are controversial. This is something the governor agrees with me on the policy. It's just for some reason he doesn't want to take care of the problem now. But doesn't your leader, pardon me, well, one follow up, uh, doesn't your leader represent you, you folks in the caucus, and are you going to agree to go along with what Senator Hand says? Yeah, I'll go along and not bring up warehouse tax? I actually, I spoke with Senator Hand last night, and, um, and he. Uh, gave me the uh, the authority to say on his behalf that he supports the position of repealing the warehousing tax. Um, I don't know how those negotiations are going to go. It would be out of line for me to speculate on that. Uh, but will, will, do I have full confidence in Senator Han and, Sen and uh, Representative Doubt to do the best that they can to try to do the best thing for the people of Minnesota, which is get rid of this tax? Yes, I guess if the governor is going to be willing to say, fine, then we won't do disaster relief. Well, that'll be on the governor. Senator, you mentioned as a, one of your four examples of the, the political contribution refund. Are you offering your gubernatorial donors that uh, preference when you? I, I am not right now. No, and I don't know if I'm going to, but I'm not right now. I'd prefer that it go away. And secondly, why does it seem like you and Rep Representative Zellers are one up, trying to one up each other on this? I mean, you call a press conference, he issues a new news release on it. He's doing a survey. You're, you're highlighting this again. You've been highlighting it for a couple weeks now. Is this is this playing well with the base? I can't speak for uh, you know Representative Zellers. He's he's more than capable of speaking for himself. Um, I have been bullish on this issue since day one. I have I have taken the position that this is a very bad thing for Minnesota, and I have functioned as a senator to try to do what I believe is right for the state of Minnesota. Uh, I certainly am not trying to one up anyone. Um, Representative Zeller's got the email like everybody else to, to be here today. I'm glad that he's with me on this because it's it's the right thing for Minnesota. So are you speaking as a senator today or a gubernatorial candidate? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm. I, I, I'm not sure that uh, I, you know. I'm not sure that you can necessarily say, "Well, I'm I'm up here today, and, and there are no implications for both." What I'm telling you is that uh, you know I'm I'm here today because I'm an elected official, and I have the ability, hopefully, to influence this issue, and uh, that's why my colleagues from the Senate are here, and um, we're we're here to try to do the right thing for the, the people of Minnesota and uh, obviously I'm running for governor I'm not hiding that but you'll notice today we're here as senators and representatives so let me try it this way do you think you'd be doing this press conference if you weren't running for governor <laughs> yeah I think I would uh, I mean obviously you know it's yes I, I I'm not doing this because I'm running for governor I'm doing this because look at what's already happening to the economy I mean, after the Republicans passed their biennial budget in the spring of 2011, we've seen nothing but forecasts for revenues in excess of projections, to the point that this Democratic governor and this Democratic legislature had an additional billion dollars to work with during the last biennium that uh, came in above forecast. What's the forecast for June or July, the first month of the governor's new budget? $20 million shortfall. Uh, relative to expected revenues. So we're already starting to see the damaging effect. And so, yes, I'm, I'm here because I'm a senator. I'm concerned about the state of Minnesota. So, so j just to be clear, the, the governor had said he would absolutely consider repealing the warehouse tax if there was a way to pay for it. To be clear, you, you do not have an, a sort of an itemized list to come up with that $85 million. Uh, I, I've given you some examples. We certainly could come up with an itemized list. But, you know, Barrett, I find it fascinating that this governor 
chose to increase spending by over $3 billion, increase taxes and fees by over $2.1 billion. He was more than willing to lead on that. He's led the charge on let's tax Minnesotans more, let's spend more. But now the mess that has been created that I am trying to fix, along with these folks and a lot of other people, by the way, in both political parties, now it's, well, I'm not going to lead on this, Senator. Uh, you know, I'm not going to lead on this. How, 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 do, how, do, we, uh, how do you plan to, to fix the... Uh, the revenue shortfall. I, I really would like to see the governor step up and be a leader and give some of his own suggestions. He's going to have this problem in February and March. He agrees this thing needs to go away during the session. But yes, yeah, certainly we can come up with, with more uh, ways to save money. No, I have no doubt in my mind that when we increase spending by over 8 percent in this biennial budget that we are capable of, uh, of finding that. Now that's it for questions I think, but I want to give my colleagues, anybody that has anything you'd like to address, go right ahead. Uh, Warren Limmer uh, from Maple Grove. Uh, one little caveat that you may or may not know, uh, keep in mind that the way Minnesota works for special sessions, the governor can call a special session, but the legislature is the one that will end it. They're the ones that will call for the adjournment, so any session can go on as far. And that's why it's so careful, why others are so careful in wanting to orchestrate special uh, sessions. To the same token, the subject matter is not limited by the governor, it's limited by the members of the Senate and the House. So just keep that in mind, it's an open playing field and that's always the concern of any governor. Believe me, I've been here from, from a guy who's been here a long time. Governors always want to control the subject matter in a special session and they don't want it to fray out. And so that's why we're having this discussion about whether or not there's other issues that are of an equal priority to that of emergency relief and perhaps this uh, farm tax issue. We happen to believe there's a few other issues that are of equal concern and can affect the number of jobs and the job quality in the state. We agree that the financial security of our families comes from good jobs not necessarily government programs. Senator, Senator what else should be on the agenda? Uh, I, have, I have no other agenda other than promoting this particular one right now, and I agree with Senator Thompson, and I am not here other than my role as a legislator who believes that this is the appropriate and timely issue to address immediately. Senator, Just the governor doesn't control the agenda, but the majorities do. Have any of you talked to uh, Senator Bach, Senator Scoy, or any of the other members of the majority I party. can't speak for anyone else here. I have personally have not talked with them about any so issue. So e even though they don't need your vote uh, to pass something, uh, they do need your agreement to go into special session. And, and that's kind of where this is. And if you don't agree... Well, you know, I'm just a little cog in the wheel. And so I, uh, I just go along with the flow. <laughs> no, seriously, what about that? I mean, you, they don't what? need your vote, but they insist on your agreement. Well, it's going to be pretty hard to get 201 legislators. It's like herding cats trying to all agree on what is the appropriate issue of a special session. So I can't, uh, they haven't come and talked to me. They haven't asked me for any commitment uh, until they do. I guess, uh, you know, any legislator can bring, they have a right to bring up any issue they want during any legislative session, whether it's a special session or not. And you're talking about your leaders have not asked you for a commitment. Uh, I have not had any discussion. Pat, can I uh, just yeah, you know, the interesting thing is that on this particular issue, almost everybody agrees. There's bipartisan agreement on this, that this is a problem that needs to be addressed. The only question is, are we going to do it sooner or later? And the practical reality is that doing it later will harm Minnesota. And I'll give you one just anecdotal example uh, out of the district that I represent in, in a more rural area. There's a, a cheese factory, cheese and dairy operation. They were going to expand. They are now going to expand in Wisconsin. And, and the district that I represent borders Wisconsin. We run into this competition problem all the time. And it's little things like this and, you know, the piling on of, of all the various uh, taxes and regulations that we got in this last session that, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 jobs are not going to be in the district that I represent. They're going to be in Wisconsin. Now, why would we let that happen when we can fix it in a couple of weeks? Everybody agrees this is an issue that needs to be addressed. 
pretty much everybody agrees. There's absolutely bipartisan agreement. And the governor has agreed we should address this. The only question is do we do it sooner and stem the bleeding? Or do we do it later and let Minnesota get harmed? I say let's do it sooner, and that's the right thing to do.